Welcome back. It's your favorite comedian and also intuitive speaker. It's me, Rachel LaForce. That's right. I'm a comedian. I'm a creative producer. I'm a podcaster. I'm an actor. I'm a voiceover actor. Uh, How many things can she do? Mental math, not one of them. I can't do that. Don't worry. That's not what we're doing today. I want to offer you a Oracle card reading. Uh, This is for my favorite deck right now. This is my favorite deck. And uh, it's the Magical Spirit Oracle. The brilliance of you. And also, if you're watching this today and you're like, headphones, LaForce, that's new. I forget how much I love them. I don't like the way they look on camera, but it just feels, it puts me in a different headspace when I'm performing with them. Um, And so that's what we're going to do. It was a dramatic pause. If you're like, did my, did my, um, did my camera give out? What's happening? My computer. So what we're going to do is I'm really feeling like I want to offer you some long-term advice. I typically like to say that it's unsolicited. Uh, maybe some of you came here for advice and some of you are like, absolutely not. No, thank you. And that would be fair. Okay. Just a grown woman recording these in her home studio with, a. Angels number 1111 t-shirt on, okay? Just a beacon of expertise. So I'm here for it. But we are, as I'm recording this, and I like to say that messages like these, which is why I thought about it, some messages that I leave you with are very kind of energetically timely. They're what's happening. And I'm really wanting to move us and step us into this next iteration of self, um, everything that is next to come. I don't think that anything is slowing down. In fact, it feels like everything is just going to accelerate. And so we're really looking for tools, words of wisdom, spiritual wisdom, action steps. What are these things that are going to keep you locked into self and able to ride the wave move with it, be conscious that you're moving with it. So many of our problems, our issues, we're going too fast. And that's how we get in our own way, right? Then if we're not going fast enough, we get a double cappuccino, macchiato, double twist, right? We have that in the morning and most of us don't eat lunch. You go through and then you just cram Chick-fil-A in your face on the way home. And then you're like, oh, well, now I got to go meet my friends for drinks. So then you have, you know, four IPAs while playing trivia and then do it all over again. And we're all confused why we can't find peace. Okay. So that's really what we're going to focus on. So I just would like you to take a minute and just kind of sit with what's been coming up for you all winter. We're about to go into spring equinox, which for me, I, I, um, I recognize that as the new year. I still think it's insane that we identify the new year as being the dead of winter, at least here in the States. I think that is hilarious, in fact, that we do that. We're all just freezing cold wherever we are being like, happy new year. Certainly everything will be better now. Half of the reason why I think our resolutions or things that we set out to do fall flat, it, a lot of it is just energetic. That simply the entire world is asleep. In our, you know, it's our, our nature, everything else. And we've set these major like go get them goals. And it's like, dude, it's still dark out all the time. What are you talking about? So I really always look forward to this type of year. Spring is very potent for me. It's a very magical time. And um, I think that there's a lot in store. So uh, if you are new to this, I'm going to close my eyes. I say a prayer for myself uh, that may I be a clear channel to give us what it is that we need most and that all of this comes from a place of love and that it will be resonant for you. All right. So you can go ahead and close your eyes and say a prayer for yourself as well. Here we go. All right. So how I do this, okay, this has been happening a lot. Some of you who 
uh, subscribe to these spiritual practices, modalities, things like that, you're probably already hip to it. Those of you that are just starting to dip your toe in and you're like, I don't know how any of this works. This was always a thing for me that I was like the most, not skeptical, but I was like, I don't get it. Um, or oracle cards, tarot cards, things like that. Um, and really I'm just going to give you my definition of how I see them working is in the same way that a scripture, right? So let's just talk about the Bible. A scripture may, or a proverb may say one thing. And then depending on where you are in your life, you can go back to that exact same scripture and it means something entirely different for you, right? That's why, I mean, the Bible got to give it to them. I mean, just number one selling book year after year. Okay. So it must be doing something right. And it's because it is timeless and it is about humanity and our experiences. And so the Oracle and both tarot, there are different symbols that represent different phases of life, uh, different things that we're experiencing and coming into. When I'm pulling cards, um, how I identify is I've, I've now connected to my higher consciousness. And in the same way, if you uh, you're at your local Olive Garden and they say cheese and you say yes and they say, say when, right? And then you dictate when the cheese is no more. That's what I'm doing. So when I'm shuffling through these cards and I'll hear now, and that's the one I just, that's a knowing, right? That's the best way I can describe it to you. And so sometimes multiples will kind of pop out, but I'm not always sure, but I'm like, ooh, this might be it. And then a lot of times if I look at them, it's not me choosing. I'm like, none of this is where I'm like, Ooh, they'll like this one better than that one. Like this is not how it works. Um, but I, there is just a knowing that it's like, Oh, I'm connected to this thing. But I think it's interesting because all three of these cards are cards that I have pulled very recently. And this is a completely shuffled deck. It's always shuffled. It's not like, Oh, they were together. I pulled three different things and I ended up with three of the same things, which is kind of nice when you're going through a new deck, but there are so many cards in here that I'm dying to know their wisdom and what they want to share. And they just haven't made their way out yet. So I think there's something really interesting about having these three together. If you're a number person, the numbers on these are one, 23 and four. So uh, I'm going to read them in the order that I believe um, the reading wants to come through as I would define it. So this first one is um, the mystic. That's card number one. Number two, that card is the mind. And number three is the moon. And that's uh, the number four card. Okay. So this first card said, there's a reason you have those dreams. This is the mystic, the intuition, the high priestess, and the visionary. So out of these cards, to me, this card is the knowing. This is the part of you that knows, right? The second part is the mind, and this says give to the mind, and it gives back. Inspiration, mood, and cycle. To me, this is very much our earthly journey, so many of us guide ourselves by our mind. We're ruled by our mind, what it thinks, what it doesn't think, okay? This third card is the moon, duality, hidden gem, or secret power. And this card says, what if your strangeness is actually your brilliance? And I'm going to count that as the third, okay? So again, before we even went into this, I was like, I'm really seeking something um, that is about the sense of stability and what we're going into next and, and I mean that both on a collective level of everything that's happening in the world and also, you know, uh, here in the States, we're going into spring. So that's also kind of this acceleration and this, this blooming, this coming out of things. And also I think so many of us on a personal level are stepping into a new season of life, whether that's you've accepted a new job, uh, you've moved in with a partner, you've moved out of a place with a partner, you are starting your own business, all of these things that can be new you're a new parent, you're an empty nester. And it feels like all of the, all of what you've had has gotten you this far. I know that sounds so elementary and it's like, yeah, wow, you're really blowing our minds here. But if you think about it, it's, it's pretty deep. And it's this idea of just that everything that you have has gotten you this far. And so what's really going to carry you through this next turbulent phase. And turbulent doesn't mean bad. I want to be clear about that. I just mean there are going to be a lot of bumps in the road. 
Because whenever you are doing something new, that's what happens. That is what you sign up for. So this idea of, oh, I'm going to try something new, that's the thing. We're fearing the experience itself while also wanting that experience. And so we're working against ourselves. Rather than if we can come into self and go, I accept that there will be turbulent times and I am going to be learning. So rather than seeing it as a negative, going, I'm acknowledging that this is going to be a phase about learning learning about self, learning about my capacities, learning about my gifts, learning about this new phase. And also knowing you're going into it, have a little fun with it, going into it like an anthropologist, you know, going into it, you know, kind of with a notebook out and, you know, not ruining the experience by overthinking. Okay. Those are two different things. Relax, but being mindful. What is this wanting to teach me? How am I experiencing this? How does this feel? Oh, wow, I can handle not being great at something when I immediately start. Oh, wow, this feels good to be outside of my comfort zone. Picking up on all of those things because they want to teach you something. And so that's really what's getting ready to happen. And you may already be feeling these things. And that is why I chose this card as the first one, that there is a reason that you have those dreams, your intuition, your high priestess, and your visionary that what is going to carry you through in these turbulent times, what is going to carry you through? And this energy will change as it goes throughout the year, but I'm really feeling like whatever these new things are that we are starting, like it starts in April. Again, I'm not a soothsayer, relax. If yours starts in June or whatever, like it's just guidance, okay? Don't hold me to it. But it really feels like it's these things that are like boop, 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 boop. And that we've been planting them and planting them and planting them. And it's this thing where it's like, okay, now all we can do is just let it do what it's going to do. And that is going to carry us through all the way almost until the end of the year. And I feel like things will start to shift again. And this is natural. Typically they do around November. But I feel like what we're going into now, so it's like, you know, if you were going on a road trip, you would make sure maybe you'd get your oil changed, you'd get your tires rotated, you'd make sure, you know, okay, there's a couple places we're going through, there's not as many gas stations, that's something we want to be aware of, we're going to pack our favorite snacks. Like, you would be preparing so that if at any time if you needed something, you would know what to look for. That is something that's going to be so beneficial for for now until around fall of even if you're like, but Rachel, I don't know what's to come. Like, I'm just talking simple things. You know, it's like, do you have some money in your savings account? Do, you know, are are there systems that are taking a little too much time that maybe you could find something that would alleviate that stress, right? Maybe the, the grocery store that you like going to is too far away. Are there any of those items that you can have delivered to your house through Amazon? Or just looking at ways, this is not a whole thing about biohacking your life, but meaning like, are there simple solutions that can kind of free up a little bit of energy and space because you are going to need that as we're beginning on this journey. You are going to need that energy. This is a marathon and it starts pretty much now. And so really making sure that we're prepared because what is going to carry us through is not only this action, but it is knowing that you know what the vision is. So even when that turbulence comes up and then your mind is wanting to go, this was a terrible idea. You're not at all fit for this, you big dumb idiot. Or whatever narrative your, your uh, you know, negative voice sounds like of knowing that you're able to balance that negative feedback by continually going back to the vision. And what that's going to do is you go through turbulent times um, and you're going through these learning curves and you're going through the action of putting putting the plan into action and literally seeing how it works, right? Is knowing you also have the opportunity to change your mind. This card here, it says give to the mind and it gives back. Give it reassurance. We know this, right? Neuroplasticity. We know that it is only doing what it knows that it's always done to keep you safe. So when you're trying to step out and do something new, it's going to give you every negative symbol possible, every negative thought possible, every intrusive thought possible, because it thinks, "Uh uh-oh, you know, alert, alert, alert. So the new part of you, that visionary part of you now needs to take over so it's in charge. So that what's happening is that every time your mind goes abort, abort, this part of you can go, 
we've got it. Here's what we're going to do. And it's okay. So through this process, even that if you're doing this work and I say work very purposely, when we get to fall, when we get towards the end of the year, you're going to look back and not only see the progress and the growth, but a lot of those internal monologues, if you've chosen to do the work are different now. They're just different now because I think there's a lot of things that like you're wanting to bring through that you're wanting to have kind of rise up and it can't do that yet because you're not giving it the space to. So even if it's something where like you have to radically change your perception, even if you're not there yet. So meaning like I recorded a podcast earlier today. Most of you know that I'm um, rounding out postpartum with my second child, losing and like getting back into a body that feels comfortable for me has been very challenging. Um, and I really was not feeling confident about myself. And I start hearing all these old thoughts coming up and all these things I'm saying and why, you know, really, really nasty things. And I just had to put a pin in it and be like, first of all, we would never speak to anyone like that. How awful. And second of all, what would it be like if you showed up as though um, you were like in, insanely hot? What would that be like? Because all of it is, is a choice, right? So when you, and I just share that as a point of connection of like, when you do get to that place and that mind starts to play tricks on you, you are going to need to override that system that gets triggered and it goes, you can't do this. Look at all these errors that you made. Why would you think that you could have quit your job? You had this cushy situation and now you're trying this thing. You're in it. You, you need to override that system. I need to come in. You need to hit that button and turn that sensor off and be like, thank you so much for wanting to do this to keep me safe. We've got this. If we're learning and we're making mistakes, that means we're making progress, okay? And then that's when this third card comes in. So that one and two are really going to work in tandem. And this third card is really what I want you to have this sense of security. And this is probably going to be the toughest part because... So what this card says, and it's, you know, what if your strangeness is actually your brilliance? And it's asking you to step out even further. And so, you know, our mind is just a system. It does what it, what you know, it's like, I want to move my left arm. Okay, so I move my left arm. And like, you know, all of these things. But that this vision is only going to come through when you have your trust. And you're making, an, uh, uh, wait for it, taking action from that place of trust. So while some of you may be taking, I think for some of you, it's very radical action. Some of you are going to be leaving partnerships. Some of you are going to be leaving businesses you created or selling them. Some of you, like for some people, there are, there is going to be very, very big, radical, radical action. And for some people, the action is going to be very small, but it feels very radical because maybe, you know, you... You're like, I'm going to quit smoking, right? That's a pretty, if you've been a smoker and I have been before in my life, that's a radical choice. So, you know, sometimes things that are very small can still feel very out of body. And I think a lot of that, again, going back to your mind is acknowledging that. And again, we're going to look at this. We're not going to keep looking at it and going, oh, I've been doing this for a month or, oh, like my biggest piece of advice, for lack of a better word, of my guidance is can you stick with this from now until again, we're going to say arbitrarily November. What would it be like to trust? Again, that's where this last card, the moon card comes in. What would it be like to trust your vision? Because so many of us, I talk to people all the time. They know what their dreams are. They've seen them. They know exactly what the vision is. They know what they want or they know how they want to, you know, they know the type of relationship that they want to be in. They know all of these things, but there's not that full trust is not there yet to take that action. And so much of that is because our mind gets in the way, which is why I put the, the mind card in between, you know, both literally on a physical example and, you know, spiritually or otherwise, where what can you do? What can you do? So, because your mind is going to want to get in the middle of it. Oh, cool vision. Big dumb idiot. You can't make that happen, right? Oh, you're just going to trust or you, you're special or something, right? And so again, your strangeness or your ability to trust in what it is that you want to bring through, we need to eliminate 
this idea of judgment on any on any, on either side. So it's not the judgment of like, oh, I this is stupid or oh, I can't do it or oh, I'm special and that's why this is going to happen. It's just I've said this a lot and that's also just kind of like the energy of spring, which is like kind of that like get lost in the doing a little bit, but we're not quite there yet. That's really summer energy, right? Everything is fully in bloom. And so really the first things, like I said, over the next two, three weeks as we're moving into truly the springtime is taking inventory. What do we need to get to where we're going? What do we need to let go of? What do we need to bring in? How do we need to re-navigate the space so that we're able to do those things. And then we really need to become mindful of our mind and how does it want to work with us and how does it want to work against us? Because when we're paying attention to how much it want to work against us, that's what we're choosing to think, to uh, focus on, to hear. Excuse me, there's also this part of you that knows, it's that intuitional part, but I also do believe that that part can live in our mind. We just have to make space for that. So being mindful of those things and letting that both positive and negative live in the in-between and always coming back to this sense of, and I love that this is the moon card. The moon is known as like grandmother energy. It's the the womb. It is, it's in cycles, right? It's always like the, the moon shows us that, you know, you can be full or you can be, you know, all these things that folks say about it. And I think there, there's something very grounding and nurturing about it. And so maybe for you, it's even like looking up at the moon, you know, even if it becomes that of seeing how brilliant that the moon is and it doesn't ask for permission. It's not like, is it cool? I'm going to come out full tonight. I hope that's okay. Is everybody okay with that? It just does its thing. And that's really what that trust is about is the trust is going to be, can you continue to make these radical changes big and small while not needing the permission. And you're going to get in your own way a lot because your mind is going to pop up and be like, you need permission. You need permission. And that is, this was pretty profound. So I feel like we're going to, I'll make some notes about this. We're going to come back to this reading in November. Okay. So Rachel will force guarantee. And I'm going to read the energy then and we're going to do three new cards and we're going to see if kind of reflecting back on that did we do the work how did it look like and and I think that again it's like you can't give yourself what is that November May no she's high what's happening April May June July August September October November eight months you can give it eight months okay you can give it eight months these things that you really want to do, these things that you're not paying attention to, eight months, that's it. That's all I ask, okay? So that's what we're going to do is really getting clear on that. And let's, again, take those field notes. Get an actual field uh, notebook. Barnes & Noble's back. Apparently, they've made a sl- splash. So you can actually go back to a Barnes & Noble physical place and you know go pick up one of those, pick up a moleskin, something like that. And, and so you can kind of track this. And then that way, you know, also know that I'll be doing it too and that we're going to hold ourselves accountable and we're going to see what happens when we hold the vision, when we get comfortable making mistakes, when we learn from those mistakes, when we account for them again, that's that acknowledgement. Okay, here's what happens. And we continue to lean into that moon, into that trust and that knowing that there is something on the other side of this. It's magical and it's brilliant and it's for you. And that's the biggest piece, that it's for you. So the more that you stay in it and you stay present, we're going to get there on the other side. Or maybe we won't, but we'll check back in in November and we'll find out. All right. I've been Rachel LaForce. Love you, mean it.